Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Leslie from Jalili Creations and today we are going to be making the Fundamental Tote by Jalili Creations. Hey, that's me. This is my very first pattern. It is a shoulder bag that has a boxed bottom and on the inside we have a zipper overlay and a slip pocket that is divided into two. I created this bag to teach at So Magical Florida. So it's designed with time constraints in mind for beginners and on domestic machines. But I also wanted to keep my advanced bag makers in mind when creating this. So I wanted to give them or you a blank canvas to create and add whatever you would like. There's so many possibilities for this tote. You can do an embroidery on the front. We could do two tone. We can add a magnetic snap. We can add a zipper closure. We can do so many things with this little bag, but I wanted to create a nice bag that we could complete, you know, in one sitting at a class. So it's gonna be great if you need a pick me up, something to get your socho bag, just to get going, or if you're doing craft fairs and you wanna get a lot done quick, I mean, this is a pretty amazing bag, substance, and it doesn't take that long to make at all. So in this video, this is going to be a quicker version of making this bag. So for advanced bag makers, if you just need a quick reference later on, this video is going to be for you. If you're a beginner and you have no idea where to start, check out my other video that I'll link in the description and it's going to be more in depth, go step by step and walk you through the entire process. Think more, sew along with me. I'm going to have limited um, sped up sections or anything like that in the other video. This one, I'm not gonna go over all the tiny, tiny little details that if you've made bags before, you know how to stitch your straps and so forth. So hang out with me for this video and I really hope you enjoy this pattern. Before we begin, I just want to go over everything that we need. For our hardware, we'll need a number five zipper pull, our number five zipper tape. We're going to need four strap connectors. These are the three quarter inch strap connectors with prongs from Sia Swag. They come in a pack of four and include the brackets. Optional are four strap ends. We need our slip pocket accent. We need a zipper overlay. The pattern comes with the template to make your own, or we do offer customized templates in our shop with your logo or desired text. An optional nameplate. We have our two zipper pocket linings. We have our slip pocket. We have two exterior pieces and two lining pieces. For the exterior, this is cork that I did not interface. For the interior and pockets, I used a cotton that I lined with Wizardry Cotton Firm on the lining pieces, and I used Cotton Soft on the pocket pieces. So it's just a little bit softer versus the um, firm is a lot more stiff. And we will also need two straps. Now we want to start with some prep work. For this pattern, in the beginning, I give all the measurements to mark the guidelines. Do that now in the beginning so that we don't have to worry about adding them as we go. The most important part is going to be on our linings to mark the zipper side and the slip pocket side so that we can later easily identify them. The identifying markers on the exterior panels is going to be the front side where we add our nameplate. So if you have a directional print or a print that you would rather show on the front, then make sure we add our name tag to that side and that will become our front panel. If you're not using interfacing on your exterior piece, it may be necessary to add a little bit of interfacing 
underneath your bracket so that it doesn't pull through to the front side. For this step, we want to take our metal bracket and line it up along the T that we created at the two inch line. Take your metal bracket, center it on that line. Mark your holes on the second from the top and the very bottom hole on the bracket. Use a craft knife to carefully cut small slits on those lines that we just marked for the bracket. Fold the prongs back on your connector, push them in from the front side through to the back side. Add your bracket on the back side and fold the prongs towards each other. Push them flat. Secure with a piece of tape. We also need to install our nameplate. On the front piece, if you marked a spot for your nameplate, line up the bottom of your bracket or the bottom of your tag on that line that we marked. If you need to stitch on your tag, you will need to do that on the front side. Now we need to repeat for the other side, but of course, since it's the back, we won't be adding a name tag. Take your straps and on the back side of your strap, draw a center line down the entire length of both straps. We need to add double-sided tape to the left and right side of the center line about an eighth inch away. You can also use clips for this step instead of double-sided tape. Peel off one strip of your double-sided tape and fold the raw edge to the middle line that we just created. Keep folding that raw edge to the center line the entire length of the strap. Once we reach the end, we need to flip the strap around and remove the double-sided tape on the other side and fold to meet the center line and the other edge of the strap. So now you should have a strap that is half the size of what we started with. We need to take another strip of double-sided tape, or like I mentioned before, we can use clips and run double-sided tape down the entire length of our strap. Remove the backing of the double-sided tape and carefully pinch both folded edges to meet one another. Repeat for your other strap. Now we need to top stitch down the entire length at an eighth inch. The cork that I'm using on the exterior is from So Many Creations. I really like the texture of it. It's nice and smooth and I have not noticed or seen any cracking on any of the bags I've made on the main body or the straps. Now we want to even up the ends of our straps and make sure they are the same length. If you're going to add strap ends, we need to add those now. These just slide on the edge of our strap and attach with two tiny little screws. The worst part is adding these little itty bitty screws because if they hit the floor, they're really hard to find. Sometimes a magnetic screwdriver can really help with this step. step we want to work with our lining piece that we have labeled zipper. We need our actual zipper, we need our zipper tape, we need our zipper overlay, and we need our two zipper pockets. So we want to start with our overlay. So we want to flip our overlay over and we want to add double-sided tape centered on the top and the bottom, avoiding an eighth inch around the top the inside and the sides and the bottom. So we just wanna make sure that when we stitch around this overlay that we're not stitching through the tape at all. Take our zipper overlay and we want to remove the double-sided tape from the back and we want to center it on the line that we drew the first step. So we have our line drawn here and we know the center of our lining at the top so we just want to go ahead and center 
like that and press down. Once we have our tension correct, we need to top stitch around the entire exterior perimeter of our overlay. from behind our overlay. So I like to just fold that in half, give it a snip down the middle, and trim side to side, going up underneath that overlay, and then do the same on this side. So I'm just cutting straight down the middle and going just about an eighth inch or a quarter of an inch behind that overlay. And now I can flip it over and I can use the tape and the overlay as my guide and trim all that fabric away from the back. That's also why it's important to keep that tape an eighth inch away so that we have room to trim that fabric from behind our overlay. Okay, we'll set this lining aside for now and grab our zipper tape and one of our zipper linings. Lay our zipper tape right side up and centering it, you should have a little bit of extra that hangs off the edge. So I don't necessarily care too much about centering it exactly, but we just want it to have a little bit off of each side. And stitch this down at an eighth inch seam allowance. flip up our zipper so we have we just stitched it this way we want to flip up the zipper and pushing that seam allowance back down wrong sides together so now we should have the inside of our pocket and the back side of our zipper and we want to take our other lining zipper lining piece and line these up edge to edge and then the top of the zipper tape at the top of that other lining piece. So there will be a little bit of overhang on our lining pieces here, but we just want these sides to be matched up and this top edge here. And then we're going to stitch that down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And add double sided tape right on top of that stitching that we just stitched. On the top and the bottom of that zipper tape. Now we can add our zipper pull. And we want to put that on from the right side so that it closes on the left and opens to the right. So now our zipper lining should look like this with our zipper pull going towards the left side. And if we were to flip up our lining it is right sides together. So now we want to take our zipper overlay and we are going to want to line up the zipper teeth in the center of our overlay. And we want to make sure that the lining is centered on that window as well. So the lining, zipper lining here should line up just past your stitching here. So once you have a good understanding of that, let's peel off the top row of our tape and carefully lay this overlay right on top of our zipper tape.
make sure everything's lined up on the back so it should go you know not to one side or the other it should be pretty center on your overlay once everything is good there let's flip back the lining and peel off this bottom row of tape Then I like to just gently let the overlay lay flat on top of the zipper because we don't want it pulled tight in any direction. So your zipper teeth should be in the middle of the overlay. So if you need to adjust, it's just double-sided tape. You can peel it back, shift it over, and lay it down carefully. So once we have, now that your zipper tape is taped behind our overlay, we need to stitch it on. So flip up both the zipper lining panels so they are up at the top of our work area and we need to stitch along the bottom of our zipper window. So we are just going to go from right here all the way across the bottom and end over here leaving our thread tails long and pulling them to the back. We don't want to go all the way around the pocket or you're going to stitch your zipper closed. Now we need to flip our zipper pocket back down facing the bottom of our lining and we need to continue top stitching starting at that same hole that we stopped in going up the side across the top and down ending where we started. Once our thread tails are trimmed, we just want to line up our zipper pocket back on the back side and trim off any excess so that it's even. Flip it right side up and fold back our lining to expose our zipper tape and our zipper pocket lining. And we want to stitch down the side, starting at the top of the zipper, down the side, across the bottom, and up the other side at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now we need to trim off any zipper tape. And if there's any excess on the sides, you can trim that off as well. And our lining panel is complete. So we're gonna put that aside and grab our slip pocket panel and our slip pocket pieces. For this side, we'll need our slip pocket panel, our slip pocket, and our slip pocket accent. Working with our slip pocket, we want to orient it so that the long sides are vertical, and we're going to fold it in half right sides together. Add a few clips to hold it in place. Crease down and fold the slip pocket nice and flat. And we want to stitch along the sides 
at a quarter of an inch seam allowance only on the short sides, which were used to be our long sides. To reduce the bulk in the corners, we want to trim the folded corners in the seam allowance as close to the stitching as we can without cutting into the stitching. So about an inch high to right to the corner of the stitching at an angle. So we should have little corners trimmed just like that. Flip our slip pocket inside out and I like to stick my thumb into the corner and use my index finger to push that corner through first. In that way I can kind of pinch it and then grab it the rest of the way out. So the same thing for this side. I like to stick my thumb in, my pointer finger out, and push that corner right through. And that way we can have nice crisp corners. If you're using cotton, you can take it over and press it or you can seam roll it, but it should come out pretty nice or that the top is basted closed. Flip our accent piece wrong side up horizontally. So we want it long ways and we want to draw a half inch line from the top edge. So the half inch is up here and the larger portion is on the bottom. Add a strip of double sided tape on the each side of our line. your slip pocket and this one's non-directional but if this was directional let's just say this is going to be the front side that we want to see on the pocket. I'm going to peel off the double-sided tape on our half inch side and I want to flip our slip pocket so now this is the back side. This is the front side that we would see on top of our pocket. So I'm taking it, this is our basted edge, and turn it so our basted edge is now here, and center best we can on our accent piece and line up that basted edge with our half inch line that we drew. Remove the double sided tape on the back side and fold it over, creasing it on the top edge of the fabric. So it is on the back side now going to be a little bit further down than on the front side, but that's okay. That's what we want. We want the front side to be a half inch and have a little bit more on the back side. And now we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch along the top edge and the bottom edge of our accent piece. And start your top stitch at the edge of your fabric instead of the edge of the accent piece. There is going to be a little overhang.
Now we trim off any excess. Trim off any excess accent panel that hangs off past the edge of the fabric. Do not cut the fabric. any stray threads. Take your slip pocket lining panel and we can fold this in half if we need to and we want to make sure that our front side is right side up. We want to fold that in half and line that up with the center mark of our main body. Once that is lined up, carefully take it over to your machine and top stitch starting at the top of our accent piece, down the side, across the bottom, and back up the side, back stitching well at the beginning and the end. If you wish to divide your pocket down the center, you can line your ruler up with our center clip marks or the center of the top and the bottom of your lining and draw a line just on the pocket piece. And that will mark the center. And now we can stitch down that line, back stitching well at the beginning and the end. So now we can clean off any remaining chalk marks on either lining panel. So both of our lining panels are complete now. We want to take them right sides together and line up the bottom edge. And we'll stitch the bottom together at a half inch seam allowance. Open up your lining panels and butterfly your bottom seam open. So we want each side going back towards its original lining. And we're going to flip it back over and top stitch at an eighth of an inch on each side of our seam on the bottom to stitch that butterfly seam allowance into place. Fold both lining panels back towards each other and we want to line up the side seams. Add a couple clips to hold that in place. And do the same for the other side. We want to stitch down the sides, starting with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once we hit this one inch mark, we want to slide over to a half inch seam allowance. Once we have our lining bodies 
stitched together, we want to open up the side seam and butterfly that and match up that seam to our lining bottom seam. So if we open up this little triangle on the side, match up these bottom linings here, and line up those raw edges. Clip that in place and stitch down at a half inch seam allowance. We need to repeat that for the other corners. So again, butterfly open the side seam and match both seams together, lining up this raw edge. Add a couple clips and we'll stitch that together with a half inch seam allowance. We need to trim the seam allowance down on the box corners that we just did and along the side seam. So for the side seam, I just kind of make a snip in and then up the side leaving about an eighth of an inch, and I'm not going to trim past that one inch line that we drew on the back. So the same for this side, trim off the box bottom, and trim up the side. To finish off our lining, we want to add a strip of double-sided tape along the very top edge of our lining. When we get to these side seams, we want to butterfly them open, so push them back towards the side and wrap the tape around. So make sure these side seams are butterflied open towards each other. can use that tape to hold it closed or open whichever okay so they're butterfly open the tapes going to hold it closed just like that then we want to peel off the tape and we're going to fold that top edge of the lining panel down to meet that one inch line so I'm going to start here on the side edge and fold the side seam to match the seam just below it. And then I'm going to work myself, work it my, going to work my way around the bag, removing the double sided tape and folding down to meet that line. When we get to the side seams, pull it open just a little bit and that'll help fold that thicker seam down. Again, just working our way around the bag, folding everything down to that line. So your lining should be lining side in just like you would see in a bag with the top edge folded over to the line that we drew on the back. Grab your two exterior panels and we want to put those right sides together. We're going to assemble it just like we did the lining where we line up the bottom
but our seam allowance for the exterior is going to be 3 8 So we want to stitch along the bottom with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Fold open the lining pan or the exterior panels and press that seam open. Flip it back over and let's top stitch down the side, making sure that we keep those seam allowances pushed over where they need to be so we stitch those nice and flat. So we have our bottom of our exterior stitched together. Fold these two panels back right sides together, lining up our sides. And we want to stitch down our side seams at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Just like we did for the interior, butterfly open our side seams. So we have our little side hole, our little hole that's left. Butterfly open that seam and match those side seam linings up together to box your corners and stitch together at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now we want to trim off the excess on the bottom so that we don't have bulk on the inside of our bag. And trim up the side seams again, leaving that top inch. So now we have the exterior and it should be right sides in, wrong sides out. Now we do need to turn it out, but I do like to add my tape around the edge before I turn it. It just makes it a little bit easier to add the tape. Butterfly open the seams, add my tape, All the way around that top lip. You get to the side seams, open those up. And meet back at the tape where we started. So the same thing, we're going to peel our tape back, fold our top edge down to our line, all the way around. Once we come back to our other side seam, kind of open up the bag so it gives you a little bit more room to fold down that side seam. So 
also now we have our exterior with the top edge folded down and we need to carefully turn our bag right side out. So now our exterior should be facing us. So just like a normal bag would be. We have our side seams. It'll make it a little bit easier if we mark the center points along the top. So we have our centers marked here. So I'm just going to use chalk to mark those right at the top. And now I want to do the same for my lining. So I have my center triangle here and I'm just going to add a little chalk mark. Do not add, do not use a pen for this step. You will see it. So with our completed lining, we want to stick that inside of our exterior. I prefer my zipper, my back zipper to be on the back side of my bag. So I'm going to shove everything in here and it should be a nice snug fit. to start with our side seams I'm going to match up these side seams here and add a clip come around to our other side seams and secure those in place too with a couple clips find our center marks that we made on our exterior in our liner and you may have to tug your bag to the side to get these edges to line up nice and not have any saggy or wrinkles and so we're just going to clip that across to do the same for the back side. So find your center points, line those up, then give everything a little bit of a tug just to get it nice and tight. about your machine in bulk, you can take key fob pliers and you can squeeze this little seam area to distribute that bulk a little bit more even. And the same for this side. Now we need to top stitch all the way around the exterior of the bag at an eighth inch seam allowance.
we want to send these threads to the side seam. So we're going up in between the exterior and the lining. And the same for the interior threads going through that side seam and in between the layers pull those threads tight and tie a couple knots And then we want to send those tails down through the lining. So I'm just going to go a couple inches in and come out the lining. Our exterior and our interior are assembled together. Now we just need to add our straps. So for our straps, we want to grab the wrong side, which has of the strap end, which has that little, so this side's smooth and this side is more textured. And we're going to go up through our connector about an inch. So you're going to fold that over and punch a hole directly through both sides of these and secure with a rivet. And then we're going to bring this strap around the front side, up through this connector, and add a rivet. So just make sure they're even on both sides and then do the same for this side. If you have a strap rivet guide, this is where it is perfect. We're just going to line it up with our strap end and we're going to use B and C. So we're just going to line it up with our threads and the sides and make our marks. And we'll do that on all four sides. And once you put the rivets on, that is it. Our bag is complete. This is the fundamental tote. I really hope you enjoy this bag, this tutorial, everything about this. I can't wait to see your version. Please share with us on Facebook group Creating with Joe Lily. It is our group for makers. We are also on all social medias at Joe Lily Creations. If you use the hashtag fundamental tote or hashtag Jolili creations, we can also find you that way. 
Please make sure to like this video on your way out. And if you are not subscribed, subscribe to the channel so you can get notifications for other videos like this one. As always, I'll link everything below in the description. So everything that I used will be found there as well as the link to this pattern. If you have any questions, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can comment below, you can shoot me an email, you can send us a contact us form on our website. However you need to reach us, you can also send us snail mail, but don't be afraid to reach out if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to help you. Until then, we'll see you next time. Bye.